Good evening. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. This evening we're going to continue our Bible study on the book of 2 Samuel, and we're going to be in chapter 17. So if you want to see the notes, click on the lower left-hand corner tab where it says notes, and the notes will pop up underneath. Okay, let's get ready. Maybe get a glass of water. Maybe get uh, your Bible, open to 2 Samuel 17, and get ready, get your lesson. Okay, today our lesson is on Absalom pursuing David. You remember from the last time that we met, Absalom had gone to Hebron, and there he had uh, called a lot of leaders to himself. He had sent uh, leaders and spies throughout the land, telling them that when you hear the trumpets, which the trumpets would signal uh, uh, something happening, and uh, the fanfare that would show that there was no king, and that would be David's son, Absalom. Today, Absalom pursues David. Remember last week how that David and his household, along with his, uh, his personal bodyguards, uh, which were quite an army, uh, they had left the city of Jerusalem so that there would not be a war inside of the city. So today, question number one. Ahithophel, he advises Absalom to raise a small army to chase David, and that's in the first four verses of this chapter. Now, I want you to remember that Ahithophel had been invited to the feast, which we like today inviting someone to uh, a, a service, a church service, and uh, so Hithophel had gone, and then uh, when he heard that Absalom was uh, planning to replace David, instead of him bowing out, uh, he joined Absalom in this effort. And so they are back in Jerusalem, and he advises Absalom to, you know, get a small army, let's go tonight, and you'll catch him. Now, I do want you to remember that Hithophel was Bathsheba's grandfather. Now, since Bathsheba was, uh, you know, family, and what David had done in that whole uh, affair, uh, Ahithophel took this opportunity to uh, revolt against David. Uh, his plan was to ta attack at night while David and his men were weary and while they were weak. The people with him, he said, will be afraid and they will desert him. And he says, I will only kill the king. I'll keep everybody else alive. And then I'll bring them back to you. Now, Absalom liked that advice. He thought that was, he thought that was good advice. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's count, wise counsel in, in numbers. And so Absalom asked for Hushai's advice. And this is in verses 5 to 10. Now Hushai says Ahith Ahithophel's advice is not good at the moment. He didn't say it wasn't good advice. He said at this time, it, it might not be the best advice. Now remember that David has his mighty men with him, and you know them. Of course, uh, Absalom, from a little boy, he would have heard the stories of the mighty men and their exploits and how one, one of David's mighty men could literally set hundreds, uh, if not thousands, uh, on their ear. Hushai said, they are like a bear robbed of her cubs. And that's an analogy that everyone can understand. And he said, they will not camp with the people. Uh, you, you'll come to the people. Uh, you'll surround the people. You'll come to them. But David and his men, they'll be hidden. And you won't even see them. And besides that, when some of your soldiers die, the rest of your army will flee from David. He said, call all of Israel to come help you defeat David. Now, uh, Absalom, question number three, Absalom preferred Hushai's advice uh, over Ahithophel's advice. Now, there are a couple reasons that this would be true. 
the Lord purposed to defeat Ahithophel's advice. And uh, so the Lord was uh, in this. Uh, secondly, uh, that last part that we talked in the previous question, have all of Israel come to help you defeat David? Uh, Absalom loved the praise of men, and he would just love having all of Israel come to join him in anything. And so that, that was his, that was advice was good. So Absalom had the smartest man in Israel on his side, but David's prayer was mightier than Ahithophel's advice. Ahithophel was a great advisor. You remember that Ahithophel has advised David for a long time, but the Lord wanted to bring disaster upon Absalom. And so this is a this is a great principle for you and me today. Uh, the world may be smart, but a prayer is a lot more powerful than the smartest of men. Yet, when the Lord wanted to do something, uh, the Lord was going to bring it about. And now, do remember that all of this, this terrible disaster, was all chastening from the Lord on David for his uh, affair with Bathsheba. Now, question number four. Hushai tells Zadok to send word to David. Now you remember how that uh, Hushai wanted to stay with David. Zadok wanted to stay with David, but he sent them back to be eyes and ears. And that the plan was, you know, Hushai would not be able to uh, come and tell David words, so they, they set up the network, and that was through Zadok and his sons. So here's the message. Don't stay in the plains tonight. Cross over the river, lest you be overtaken. And uh, this would give time and space to David, just in case Absalom changed his mind. And there's a possibility that Hithophel might send troops without Absalom's knowledge. Remember that there's, you know, that thing that there's uh, no honor among thieves? Well, there's no honor among people that are in rebellion. Question number five. Jonathan and Ahimeaz went to warn David. Remember, they are the sons of Zadok. Uh, now, they tried to be careful along the way. Uh, they disguised themselves. They took the back roads. Uh, but as they were going along, a boy saw them, and obviously the boy knew them, knew who they were, and uh, he went back into Jerusalem, and he told Absalom. Uh, so you know, there had to be a had to be you know a boy is not just going to get an audience with the king. Uh, obviously, there were some uh, clandestine suspicions. Uh, people were asking uh, Ahithophel's men, uh, Absalom's men were careful, and they were looking for them, and so they sent out soldiers uh, after these two men. In Bahrain, uh, a woman hid them in a well, so they went down into the well, she covered it over, and then she threw some grain around it, which would make it look like... Uh, it was a place that they ground up grain and it wouldn't look like a well or look like a hiding place. When uh, they questioned her, she said, oh, they crossed over the river a while ago. And so Absalom's men, they chased after them, but they couldn't find them. Duh. <laughs> okay. And uh, so they went back to the king and we can't find them. Now, when it was safe, uh, they slipped out of the well, and they warned David. Now, in question number six, Ahithophel, he committed suicide when his advice was not followed. Now, he didn't do this because his advice was rejected. This was not, you're going to take my ball and go home. This was not that he, uh, if you're not going to do what I say, then, da -da. Uh, no. He knew that Absalom would be defeated following Hushai's advice. He knew that that was 
terrible. Uh, Ahithophel would be found guilty of conspiracy against David, and his life wasn't worth beans. Now, he was prudent uh, that he put his house in order, and he despaired when he committed suicide. Question number seven. Absalom crossed Jordan in the pursuit of uh, David. Now, this here is, uh, I'm going to say, probably uh, a few days uh, because of just the logistics, right? You know, it would take time for him to send word all over the country. This is a country that's about 150 miles wide. Uh, it is roughly 300 miles long. So, you know, just don't put out a telephone call. And you know, they didn't have standing armies in every community. Uh, so it took them a while. It could have taken them a week or two to muster this army against David. Remember that uh, Absalom had sent out word that uh, when you hear the trumpets, then I'm king. And so the army came up to Absalom. Uh, so Absalom made Amasa commander of the army, commander of his army, uh, instead of jo Joab. Uh, he was Joab's cousin. Now, uh, Joab was with David, da, and uh, so Amasa was Joab's cousin, and for him to suddenly be promoted to the commander of the army, it, he would that would went right to his head. Uh, he he thought he could best Joab and David. Now, in question number uh, eight, David finds supporters in Gilead. Now, not everyone, not everyone, and not all of Israel had gone over to Absalom. Uh, you know. Uh, I think there's a principle here that we can uh, see that sometimes we think that everybody is against us, and usually it's just the loud ones, right? So, uh, now, several men are immortalized here, having their names recorded, that they were not following after Absalom, but they helped David. They were loyal, and they ministered, to the needs of the refugees. And so they, they set out food and blankets and supplies for them. So question number nine, uh, David recognized that there was a battle gonna happen. Uh, he, he knows that uh, Israel has come with their armies to fight against him. So he organized his entourage just like he did in his battle days. He set up commanders and captains over their ranks, over hundreds and over thousands. He divided them into three groups, and he put a third under Joab, a third under Abishai, and a third under Atai. Now, David, he called for his armor, put it on, I'm going to go out with you, and I'm gonna, we're going to go into battle, and he was getting ready to go. And the people said, no, <laughs> no, 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 they wouldn't let him go. He said, you weren't worth more with the people. Uh, and the people said, you know, if, if Absalom catches us uh, without you, we're dead. And uh, we need you. Uh, you're worth 10,000. And uh, so don't, don't forsake us. You stay here. So David agreed. He didn't put on his armor. He didn't go riding out. And uh, as they were marching out, David was very careful. He kept saying to the army, and he gave orders to spare Absalom's life. When you find him, don't kill him. Please don't, don't kill him. So, in question number 10, the two armies faced off in the woods of Ephraim. Now, if you went to the woods of Ephraim today, you wouldn't find very many trees. Okay, there's been a lot of, uh, they've cut a lot of it down. Uh, but in that day, it was still, uh, it was uh, utter uh, wilderness and full of brambles, uh, crags and nooks and crannies, cliffs. Uh, it was a hard place to get through. So that's where these two armies faced off. Uh, 
Now Absalom's army was overthrown by the servants of David. Uh, he, the, the, the battle did not go well for Absalom's army at all. And that day, 20,000 of Absalom's army uh, died in the battle. However, more than 20,000 men simply died in the wilderness. Uh, the rebels did not know the woods, and they met wild beasts in the woods. They would, uh, as they were uh, cutting through the brambles, they would step off into, uh, into uh, pits and crags and uh, mire, and it, it would just, the, the woods just devoured them. Now you know that they are fighting against the Lord in this situation, and so there's no good will come of that. In question number 11, Absalom was directing the army, riding on a mule. Now, this is, this is so Absalom, okay? This is so uh, full of pride. When a king would be coronated, when a king would come into a city after defeating it, uh, he would come riding on a mule. However, you don't want a mule when you are riding into battle. Uh, a mule is not the fastest uh, four-legged animal. They're stubborn. Uh, they sometimes don't obey the quickest order. Uh, strong, yeah. Stamina, yeah. Uh, but this was not the wisest choice. And everybody would see a mule. You know what a mule looks like. You might for, mistake it for a horse at first, but boy, when you look at that face, you know it's a mule. And everyone in the battle would know that that is the king or the self-proclaimed king. So as Absalom fled before David's army, his head and his hair got caught up in the trees. And his horse or his mule just kept on going, and uh, he couldn't. He was stuck. He he was he couldn't. He just couldn't get down. Uh, it, it it wasn't like uh, remember uh, uh, the Lone Ranger who would whistle for his horse and it would come and stand right there underneath him or or uh, Roy Rogers. Okay, no, the mule just kept on going. Now someone. Uh, saw him, and they reported this to Joab. I see. I found Absalom, and his head and his hair are caught up in a tree. You know, Joab was incredulous, and you didn't strike him down. You now we don't hear the rest of that conversation, do we? You know, you. Uh, why didn't you strike him? Why didn't you kill him? Uh, <laughs> uh, the man, young man. You know, Joab said. You know, I, I'd give you, I'd give you a, a thousand pieces of silver if you had killed him. And now the mer man had heard David's order to spare Absalom's life, and he said, "My my life wouldn't be worth two cents. I wouldn't have killed him if you'd given me uh, ten thousand pieces of silver." Okay, and so Joab and his men. Uh, they found Absalom and they killed him and then they buried him. There was not going to be any great memorial uh, laying to rest of Absalom's body. Uh, he was buried for the traitor that he had, uh, for the treason that he had committed against his uh, father. Question number 12. Ahimeas now that's Zadok's son, wanted to go tell David news of the battle. And Joab would not let him go. He said, no, no, no. I, uh, Ahimeas, you're known to the king. And uh, remember that Ahimeas was one that uh, went to tell David not to stay in the plains, but to cross over the river. Uh, Ahimeas, in his, the way that he was dressed as a priest, would be known to everybody, and it would also be known to uh, David and his people. They would be very familiar with him. They would know what he looked like. Even from a long ways away, uh, they, would, uh, they would see him. And uh, so Joab sent a Cushite 
with the news that Absalom uh, was dead. Now, uh, in order for them to uh, give a pre-warning of uh, news, they had runners of what was happening, and they would periodically uh, send a runner with a message back to uh, wherever we are talking about. And uh, they, they would wear uh, light-colored color, light clothes uh, if it was uh, a situation where it was positive news, and they would wear uh, dark-colored clothes if it was sad news. And that, as they saw the runner coming, that would give them an idea that, oh, it's good, or oh, it's going to be bad. And so the Cushite would be wearing those dark clothes. Ahimea's being known, that would give the wrong message. And uh, being unknown to the king, it would prepare them to hear sad news when they saw the Cushite running uh, toward them. Uh, now, David lamented the death of Absalom in our last question this evening. Ahimea's in his excitement, when Ahimeas came running in, and David, he looks and he sees Ahimeas running towards him, and so he uh, thinks in his head, oh, it's going to be good news, because here comes Ahimeas. And so when Ahimeas gets there, uh, what's the news? What? How is Absalom? What's going on? Now, Ahimeas, in his excitement, he seems to have forgotten Absalom was dead. Uh, he... He, you know, it's like, well, I saw there, there were bows and arrows and flying and men were hacking each other. There was blood everywhere and, and, and there were spears and dead people all over the place. And yes, but how is Absalom? Um, I, I don't know. Um, he, he reported that there was great confusion, but he had no more information. Uh, now, previous verses, we hear that Joab said, you know, you're not going to run because you're known to the king and you, you're not going to give that information to David. Uh, the person that gave that information to David, David could be angry and lash out and that would have meant, you know, the Ahimeas might have been killed. Uh, uh, it was the Cushite who finally arrived and he told David that Absalom was indeed dead. David was devastated by the news of the death of Absalom. He realized his action had set up this unfortunate course of events. Now, it does not alleviate Absalom of his responsibility for his own actions. No, it, it, Absalom had to take responsibility for, for that. However, David recognized and realized that he had been a poor example to his son. That's probably the biggest takeaway that we can uh, have this evening in our lesson, is that, remember, our, our actions uh, speak louder than words, and that uh, we don't want to be a bad example. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for these lessons that show us the way to go. They show us things to do, and they think, show us things not to do. So we pray, Lord, today that you would help us to make the right choices. Pray, Lord, you would be with each one. May the peace of God be theirs, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and we hope that you have a great week.